welcome to the view. I mean, flat TV. <laughs> our, first, our first time with three female panelists making history tonight. So, flat TV with the area's largest Facebook group jumps from your computer screen to your television screen. We took our topics tonight, our agenda. We ripped it up, and we're just going to be talking about the local elections because what? What a week it's been for local politics in mm -hmm. Lemonster and Fitchburg. Yeah. So we're going to talk about, we're going to get into three areas. We're going to talk about the uh, ongoing, ongoing election uh, results coming in from Lemonster. We're going to talk about the local election in Fitchburg. And then we're going to touch on, uh, at, the, at the end, the third topic is we're going to touch on is the impact of social media on these local elections this year and how that's really changed the face of of election season. So let's start off with Lemonster. Um, two years yeah. ago, Mayor Mazzarella, contested race, opponent on the ballot, 74% of the vote. Mm -hmm. No one was surprised because he's really steamrolled every opponent that he's had. Most election seasons, no one even runs against him because they know what, what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. um, two years later, a write-in candidate steps up, name's not on the ballot, campaign's about three weeks, and we're sitting here on a Thursday night. Um, we don't know who the mayor is going to be as we await a recount. It's just amazing. So, uh, putting aside just the last three weeks in the campaign, looking from two years ago to what happened this year, to go from 74% mm -hmm. in a contested race to either squeaking by or possibly being defeated by a write in candidate, what happened, Cindy? I, I honestly think it's the school department issue. I think that brought things to a head uh, with a lot of people and this year obviously was very contentious and it brought a lot of people out and the, the right person decided to go up against him and he had enough support and it, this, was, this was the year I guess that it was going to happen. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how it really is going to work out. Lemonster resident and Kenny Ricker supporter, Di Bedoin, welcome to Flap TV. Thank you very much. Di, what happened? I think that enough Lemonster residents finally reached the breaking point and said enough. Taxes have been outrageous. Our water bills, sewer bills are outrageous. And not that I have anything against Dean, okay? I was always a big Dean supporter. But the man is taxing us out. And I'm retired now, my husband's retired. Um, my mom is 93 years old. We all live in the same building and the taxes keep going up. I can't, I can't do it anymore. And then to see, well, we've got you know X amount of all this money in the stabilization fund or free cash or wherever they move it to. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing, but the taxes are going up and my taxes are going into this fund instead of helping people like us. Kenny came along at the right time. So taxes really have been going up 2.5% every year. I think mm -hmm. we, Lemonster uses its levy capacity every year for the past 24 years, but mm -hmm. that's never stopped him from getting huge votes. Yeah, what happened right. between, I mean, taxes have been going up at the same rate every year for 24 years. Mm -hmm. What was it between two years ago and this to cause this, I mean, we talk about an earthquake. They call it the Richter it, scale, right? The we have, uh, not the tax. This is about I a 5.0 like, on the Richter scale, the what happened here, right? I agree with Cindy on this. The school was, was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. Um, our daughter's boyfriend worked at the school. He was a custodian. And after all these years, goes into work, his pink slip, bye-bye. And I've got three grandchildren in the schools, all different schools in Lemonster. Which the you schools. do know that Dean voted, uh, he didn't vote for that, for the custodians to get laid off. Oh, I, I realize that. Okay. But that all blended in. And then teachers losing their jobs. Um, I said, I've got kids, three grandkids in three different Lemonster schools. They're coming home, they're telling us, there's one teacher, there was a piece of paper on the floor. She left it there to see how long before it was going to be picked up and told the kids, don't, this is, we want to see. And, you know, the schools have gotten dirty, parents are not happy, and you, you do that kind of a cut, you're going to awaken a lot of people that are upset. Josiah Richard, welcome to Flap TV. Welcome back to Flap TV. We Thank had you on with the uh, candidates debate. You were running for Ward 5 City Councilor in Fitchburg this year. Congratulations on that race. I know you Thank came you. up a bit short, but okay. it's always great to participate. What are, you, uh, what are you seeing when you look across the city line? Well, I mean, to 
perfectly honest, I've been a little preoccupied the last few months, but um, the last couple of days I've been following the results of Lemonster, and I, I, I don't know all the, the, the details, but from what I understand, I'm looking at it from the outside, is I think a lot of Lemonster residents are ready for some change. Sounds like obviously the issue with the school department and that abrupt firing or, and then reinstating, I don't know the mechanics of it, but um, has really, um, like you said, Di, kind of awakened a beast in the vo voters. Mm -hmm. They really, you know, I think, you know, he's been one of the longest serving mayors in the Commonwealth. I think a lot of residents are ready for some change, whether, uh, uh, Rick, right? <laughs> Uh, whether he's the right person for that role, I, I don't know. I, I haven't, I've only talked to a couple people, but um, it, it sounds like uh, the city of Lemonster is ready for um, something new, some, maybe some new change, and we'll see what happens. I mean, there's about a couple hundred write-ins that were illegible, and they're going to go to a, a hand count um, probably after the holiday, and we'll figure out who's the... There's, uh, there's what, 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 what it is is there's yeah. 326 ballots that were counted as yeah. blanks by the machine. Okay. Yep. Now those blanks can be many different things. Right. The blanks could be people that just did not vote in the mayor's race. They mm -hmm. didn't like they didn't like either candidate, skipped it over, or just went there to vote for a, a particular council candidate. Every election always has blanks, right? Mm -hmm. Where people just don't vote. The second is uh, a thing the blank could be is that somebody wrote in Kenny Ricker's name mm -hmm. but did not fill in the oval. And if they did not f take that second step in filling in the oval, the machine doesn't recognize that as a write-in candidate, right. one of the 4,600 write-in candidates, uh, write-in votes. It, it recognizes it as a blank. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it could also be an overvote that causes a blank. There's a rare instance where it could actually, that blank vote could be a Dean Mazzarella vote. Mm -hmm. um, machines aren't perfect and neither are people when it comes to following instructions. So the machines have gotten a lot better, mm -hmm. but there's still a case where if someone went to vote for Dean Mazzarella and instead of circling in the oval, they circled his name or put a check mark next to his name mm -hmm. or even made a little slash across the oval instead of filling it in, it wouldn't, the bat, you know, the or, machine wouldn't have recognized right. that or and the other that would go thing into a would blank. Be is if some people didn't realize that there was a, a write in. No. And they just figured it, just assumed Dean would have it. Right, you right. have that also. So we don't, yeah. we don't know what it yeah. is. So yesterday, uh, Wednesday, the day after the election, the 4,600 write-in votes were tabulated mm -hmm. and some were discarded because, you know, uh, other people were, you know, the write-in was for someone else or, um, or it was illegible, whatever the case may be. So those were discarded. So the mayor's margin of, of, of a lead went from 160 to 210, which it stands now. Mm -hmm. So the process for the election is that a ballot that is read as a write-in, those the registrar voters are going to look at those ballots for a write-in. There's nothing technically wrong with a blank ballot. Mm -hmm. So the, the registrar voters really can't go look at that those blank ballots. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to. There's nothing technically wrong with them. Uh, the only way they can do that is if one of the candidates requests a recount. Mm -hmm. So that's why I know people are asking yesterday, why aren't they looking at these 326 ballots and see what they are? That's the reason why a candidate has to ask for the recount. So it's going to be a little bit of a process to go through that. Mr. Ricker already said that he is going to request the recount. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just as, as a point of reference, uh, you know, the 2013 election was the last one where the mayor was contested. Right. Uh, Susan Shalafu, very contested race. There were, and about the same number of votes were cast, about 10,000 votes. There were 29 blanks. This one, there's 326. So obviously something's up. Right. We know, we can assume with, you know, this is, a, this is based on the McLaughlin Show format, right? So one of you uses mm -hmm. his phrase. We can assume with metaphysical certitude mm -hmm. that there are votes for Ken Ricker in those blanks where people right. did not fill in the oval for him. But that they're enough. Ooh. Are there 211 of them right. or not? The Ricker optimists will say, sure there are, because if, you know, if, we, if, if we had guesstimated that 95% of his voters would successfully write in his name and fill in the oval, mm -hmm. that's a big thing to estimate, yeah. right? Yeah. That's a high percentage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it is 95%, he wins, because yeah. those, those 211 votes represent about 5% of the vote. So if it's less than that, we're talking 96, 97, possibly 98% of his supporters of over 4,000 people followed instructions, which is hard to believe in today's world. Yeah. Yeah. The, the yeah. Mazzarella optimists, right? Yeah. Are they going to say, well, you know what? In every election where there's only one person on the ballot, mm -hmm. you have a lot of blanks because you have some people that just don't like the candidate, but those you assume are going to vote for 
right in Kenrica. Mm -hmm. But you also have others that if there's only one name on the ballot and they they're really not they aware, they, they don't think they need to, they just pass yep. it over. Right. Is it enough? Mm -hmm. And I've been you know, trying to search the last few days, I've been mm -hmm. Googling mm -hmm. it, and there is no historical precedent. Yeah. So we really just no. don't know. We're just gonna have to yeah. wait. Yeah. Um, Kelly Wilbur, um, yeah. Lemonster resident, Fitchburg yes. businesswoman, Mazzarella supporter, I believe. Yes. Um, what happened? I mean, I think it's, I think we've already touched on a lot of these, but basically, I mean, there was a confluence of events. I mean, Ricker tapped into frustrations with the schools, with um, tax rates, um, and that, I mean, it just basically all of that comes together. He ran a three-week campaign. He got a lot of people who really passionately wanted to see a change, and like, wow, wow, the response, right? I mean, no one saw this coming. and. I, I, th I actually think that if it had been a longer campaign, I think that maybe there would have been a little bit more scrutiny if there had been a debate. I think it, it may have gone a very different direction, but you know, here we are, so that's an we wait in That's an interesting point because all I've been hearing from people on, on social media, at least in people I've been talking to one-on-one -on -one and texting, and is that could, uh, their, their, their contention is, if, could you imagine if Ricker was on the ballot, he would have wiped him out? Do you, do you agree with that? I do agree with that. Do you agree with that, Cindy? Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I, I don't doubt it. Um, I'm just, I'm not 100% sure. Because it, to be on the ballot means he would have had to have come forward a lot sooner, and there would have been a lot more time for people to get to know both sides. Right now, it was just, it was all of a sudden, boom. He was running, his, and anybody who was against Dean or was uh, ticked off about the school they jumped on Ricker. That was their opportunity. Let's go. Sometimes the shorter the time you have, the more enthusiasm you have because people jump on and they're like, let's go, let's get this done, and boom, and wow, what just happened, you know? So he peaked at the right time. You yeah, think? I think oh. so. I, I think if I had you like been that. on there for seven, eight months, there would have been time for some debating or whatever to go on. Right. It, it might have been a little different. I think there's also a limited amount of time that you can run what is essentially a one-issue campaign. I mean, I know that there were other factors, but I mean, mainly that we were talking about the school, we were talking about the superintendents, we were talking about all that, and it, I mean, I don't know if we could have talked about that for a longer period of time without wanting to ask more questions about how he viewed his role in running the city as a whole. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I'm not sure I buy into the argument. I think I'm with you. I, I don't buy the argument that if Kenny Ricker had run a traditional campaign and been on the ballot, that he would have absolutely beaten Dean. Yeah. I think Dean, um, and I have a lot of respect for him, he has run a lot of great campaigns. Absolutely. The mistake I believe he made, uh, and I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna get into, I wouldn't be inappropriate for, about private conversations, but I think if mm -hmm. you asked him about mm -hmm. the conversations that him and him and I had, um, I can tell you my perspective on it and what I told him was that he has a formula that has always worked for him, mm -hmm. that has been successful. And anyone that has ever come at him, he goes back at them like a Tasmanian devil, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. he goes right at them with, with, with numbers, with, with facts, mm -hmm. whether you agree with the, whether you think the facts are real or they're being spun, right? right? Exactly. They energize his base and they frustrate the hell out of his opposition, mm -hmm. but he has always taken on his opponent's head head to head. And in this race, he kind of went into a gopher hole. He did. Mm -hmm. He went into a gopher hole. He bet that on the strategy that there was a write-in candidate and if he engaged a write-in candidate, it would just give that write-in candidate more recognition. But mm -hmm. in, in a day of social, social media, Kenny was going to get the attention anyway. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed that he took, the mayor took what has always worked for him and put it aside. Yeah. Mm. And, and the other thing is, though, ironically, I mean, Kenny didn't really come out a lot either. If you think about it, it was, it was really both of them, both sides relying on their supporters. The supporters were ah, right at it on Facebook. Everybody was throwing it all out there, and we were doing the debates. Right? We, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Dean and, and Kenny. Yeah. It, it was, was the supporters, <laughs> yeah. and we're all fighting for the side, and, yeah. and you know, neither one of them really, you know, Came up for there. whatever their reasons yeah. were, but yeah. it's, it's just amazing. The whole thing's amazing. I mean, we all see we all see things through the lenses of our own experience. And I think our experiences on social media. You were more involved in the Ricker campaign, I believe, Di. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hearing is that even though he was not too actively engaged directly in social media and left that to his surrogates, mm -hmm. that he really did run an active campaign personally. He did. He did. 
in, in meeting people and going to mm -hmm. having events and listening sessions and things like that. Maybe you could speak a little bit to that. What I think that what Kenny, and again, I'm not on his committee. I'm just a supporter. I've known him for quite a few years in the business world. I think that Kenny actually felt that going to like the senior housing and he met with the elderly people. He went, he had a meet and greet that was open to anybody to come, ask questions, talk to him, his platform. Uh, that was at the Knights of Columbus. All of his information was out. He did what he called coffee table get togethers, kind of like what we're doing right now with people that wanted to meet him and get what his agenda was. Like, what are you planned for this? Running such a short time, he really didn't have time to put together a huge event and didn't have time to be himself physically out there. He had people plan it, said, okay, you're gonna meet with you know this group or that group. So he was a much more laid back kind of candidate, I guess, maybe laid back isn't the right word, but the people like myself that supported him, we knew what, what his points were. So when questions would come up on social media, you know, what's he gonna do about this? We had an idea and it seemed to work because like, we engaged a lot of people, both Dean supporters and undecideds. And a few times, I know we're gonna go into this a little bit later with the, the social media. If Kenny had spent as much time on social media as we did, he never would have left his house, mm -hmm. okay? Because if he would have commented on something and 10 people ask him questions and start arguments and whatever, it, that was no way to get ahead. So that is probably why you didn't see him on your page or Lemonster Unites or what have you. And did it frustrate some people? Yeah, it did. And it was asked a few times, and myself and a few other people put, well, Kenny is having this event. You know, go to the elderly housing. You can go in, it's in a lobby, sit, talk, ask questions. Well, I can, okay. And let's say it again, it goes back to well, running a short okay. campaign, a short amount of time. And in this day and age, we, we want them to come to us. Right. You know, and now with Facebook and, and Dean's presence on, on Facebook and, mm -hmm. and Dean will go on any one of the pages right. and, and he will answer questions mm -hmm. directly. So I think mm -hmm. that's the one thing about Dean supporters. We've gotten so used to that. We want everybody to be like that. We, right. want, mm -hmm. we want you front and center. You come to us and you tell us what you're gonna do. So and and if you don't, we wonder why. You know? <laughs> Dean's <laughs> always <laughs> campaigning. So that you know has a yeah. lot to do with it. And Dean is the man to answer questions. He runs the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he can be in his office and be on Facebook, mm -hmm. whereas like, somebody running against him is working to be able to sit in that office. So it's kind of moving parts going on all the time. And it's funny yeah. the, different, the different views of that to the different perspectives, because you say he's always campaigning. What he'll say is he campaigns by doing the job. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's always that's campaigning. His, that's what his supporters exactly. say, that's, yeah. by yeah, doing that's the exactly job. Yeah. Right. By doing the job. So Dean, Mayor Mazzarella has always had this aura about him of invincibility, mm -hmm. the big fish. If he squeaks this out, if he wins, um, is this election just a snapshot in time that he moves past and continues as a big fish, or does he? Is the next two years lame duck? You're asking me if I. Yeah, Kelly, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I, I really. I think there's a, there's room for something in between. I mean, obviously, the voters have spoken, and he's going to need to address their concerns here. Mm -hmm. So I, I think he's he had taken a particular stance, and it was fairly hard line. And he said, you know, the school department needs to get itself together. And you know, I've done my part, and Lemonster schools are funded enough. And he might have to back down on that. I think at this point, no but matter how, what, how even if he were to. Prevent. But how do you think he's viewed? Do you, is he viewed? as still invincible or where where other elected officials, others are mm. um, a little bit afraid to oh, I don't think push back and butt heads? Or, you know, yeah. do you think that invincibility is gone at this point? I would say so. Can, I he, think can he get it back? Yes. Do you think he'll run in two years if he wins this year? I would say yes. Yeah, okay. Josiah, anything? Um, well, I, I think I, I, I might just echo Kelly's sentiments. Um, 
it seems like uh, it, it might be a wake-up call. Um, you know, he'll, he'll probably have to answer to constituents in the city that did vote for Ricker, and who um, he, you know, I, I think one thing that Ricker had um, in such a short campaign period because he was a write-in, um, he had a lot of support clearly, um, mm -hmm. and he re and there was a, there was enough people <coughs> that he was surrounded himself by who really wanted him to win, and so I think his campaign strategy was to just come in late. Um, you know, I had a strong supporters behind him. He did the door knocking, campaigning, the coffee talk uh, events, sort of those, I guess you call those little town meeting kind of things. Um, and he allowed his um, supporters, probably with some direction, to answer the questions, be the social media presence, and help spread the word. Because clearly there were signs all over Lemonster for pretty much all the candidates, but he had some really big ones too. Um, and we'll see. I mean, I, I don't, I, 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 I would hope that any elected official, no matter how long you've been there, um, you know, you have, you can't just assume you're going to win. Um, I think um, it's an earned position, people vote for you, um, and and I think he still has to answer to the voters who voted for Ricker. And, um, you know, whether or not he chooses to run again in two years, if he wins this election, if he loses, he may move on to other things, we don't know. Um, but it, I think in the next couple business days we'll find out. <laughs> it's going to be more than a few business days. All right. but <laughs> die big fish or lame duck if he wins? I believe lame duck. Mainly in, in to amplify what you were saying, even if he pulled us out, the Kenny Ricker campaign was a dent in his armor. Yeah. And I don't think anybody can dispute that. Mm -hmm. For many years, Dean was invincible. And obviously his support base believes that. I believed it for a long time. But I think that the Dean actually got a big wake up call when he was watching the votes coming in like all of us were and going, oh, I just lost that precinct. Dean's never lost those precincts ever to any candidate. And seeing Kenny's numbers up and his numbers down, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that if Dean is reelected, that he listens to what really happened to him. Because he's never really done that. He's never lost. And he's never been in this position where so many people voted against him that, you know, it was like, okay, well, you know, 2,000 of you voted against me. I don't really have to listen to you. And now he's going to have to. Mm -hmm. And if Kenny pulls it out, I know Kenny is going to sit and reevaluate everything. And be willing to listen, everybody. Over the years, Dean, I believe, has lost his ability. He feels he can do it on his own, and that hurt him this time. Cindy, big fish or lame duck? Um, uh, Dean's still a big fish in my book. I'm sorry. I, I, Kenny is, uh, from what I've heard, is a really nice guy. I, I'm good friends with his family. I know his sister, his sister-in-law. Good people. And so I have no doubt that Kenny could do a great job. Um, he came into it late. He had the huge support. So, like I said, I think the enthusiasm was right there. Was it a wake-up call for Dean? No doubt. No doubt about that. And and he felt it. He he knows. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Dean well enough to know he felt this. And 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 if he pulls through this, he's he's going to listen. And there'll there'll be some many conversations in the future. I think the whole school issue is what started this. Um, if it wasn't for the school issue, I, I kind of wonder if Kenny would have gotten into the race because he, he didn't up until just recently. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if, if we can address the school, and now that um, the superintendent's gone, well, you know, s now we're going to be able to get into that part of it and find out what happened to those funds, that $5 million excess that they blew through. And then even after all this budget and all this went back and forth, he still gave him almost another five million on mm -hmm. top of the budget. So I think Dean has done what he needed to do, and it, I think he'll hang in there. Yeah, and you know, politicians stumble, but politicians also recover. And if any yes, politician can. can recover, it can be Dean Mazzarelli. He may have to make some adjustments, but uh, there's no question of his commitment to the city. I've known. Uh, and, and rebuilding relationships, and mm, I can yes. personally attest to that. Uh, I've known Dean now for nearly 30 years, and our relationship started very contentiously, as some of you can remember, and we have grown to have a very good relationship. Um, so he, he can build those bridges. I have confidence that he mm -hmm. can. 
On the other hand, I've known Kenny since third grade, right? We went, we went to school together. I've known him a long time. Leminster is in good hands either way. It's Absolutely. not something I don't think anyone has to lose sleep over. Well, maybe the comptroller. He can lose sleep. Maybe, maybe <laughs> if Ken wins, he can lose a little sleep. But I, I don't think Lemonster has uh, has much to worry we'll about. We'll be all right either way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So where Lemonster really a bomb went off on Tuesday, Fitchburg, yeah. was, Fitchburg was a little bit more surgical. Mm -hmm. And I think Fitchburg showed that they can com compartmentalize. And they can be upset about a certain issue but not take it out on all the candidates as a whole. And I'm going to give an example. I think what started this and why we had a lot of competition was the manner in the selection of the replacement of Steve Hay. When the city council basically appointed one of, one of their cronies, Tom Donnelly, and they did so without allowing any public comment period. And uh, you know, from a personal perspective, I sent emails to 11 councils. Only three responded back, Steve, uh, Marcus Dinatale, Dean Tran, and Jeff Bean. The rest ignored me. That whole process stunk. And they chose Tom Donnelly over Sam Squalia. And the voters went to the polls, and they mm -hmm. took out Tom Donnelly, and they put in Sam Squalia. Mm -hmm. Pretty big middle finger to the Fitchburg <laughs> City Council. But then they turned around and elected the city council and said, well, we'll disagree with those decisions, and we'll fix it for you. Mm -hmm. um, is the network, is the good old boy network in Fitchburg, is that a good thing because it, 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 is, it is collaborative for teamwork, or is it getting a little bit too pompous, Josiah? Um, well, I, it, it would be good to see. Um, more people running in general. Um, as one of my thoughts is, um, every every position should be at least challenged. Um, it would be good to see some um, new faces on the city council. I think this year is one of those years. We have, for the first time, I think, in Pittsburgh history, four women on city council, which I think is pretty amazing. Um, so hats off to my running opponent because you know she won. Um, but. Um, Kelly, when you see an incumbent councillor mm -hmm. or a mayor or you know someone within that, just post a slate of candidates and say, please go vote for all of these candidates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that is that good for democracy? Um, I think it's okay to. When obviously, we have a culture in politics in general where people endorse the people that they believe in, and to that degree, like I think that that's part of the business and mm -hmm. it's fine. I think that. When you have loyalty valued over anything else, and you have a network that is that is built on a set of people being loyal to each other and getting favors and getting elected or you know moving through the, through the cycle, that's not not as good. And I think that we have what's really interesting right now is we have a whole bunch of people in Fitchburg who have been very active in the community. Um, not necessarily in elected positions, but that are stepping up and saying, okay, I want to be part of the, the city government. I want to be on the city council. And I think those people really, really need to get welcomed. Um, and I think mm -hmm. that, you know, we need to bring in new blood, old blood, whatever. It doesn't matter. But just, you know, bring in the people that, that care about the city and have them work together. Does that network establishment mentality, do you think, discourage or block out some of the, those with different ideas? Uh, is that happening in Fitchburg? Well, I, anecdotally speaking, I think I think some people do get scared away from politics. Um, I know it's very very little, and luckily, I think um, um, participation in city government is pretty um, w welcomed. But um, there were a few people that were pretty vocal against me running, and it was pretty much uh, Marisa is the candidate. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like we both brought good um, skills to the table. Um, I think anybody, you know, if you have the credentials and the experience, is a good candidate. But um, I think the Good Old Boys Network is tight. Um, I think there's been uh, the same familiar faces that we've all seen on FATV, um, on city council, and commissions and boards too. I think there's other ways that people can serve the city. Um, and Five was, seconds. Yeah, I know we're out of time. So <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I'll leave all right, it at that. We're not going to get to social media. Let me straight it all up. Wow. Goodbye. Sorry. <laughs> Wow. We're out. <laughs> wow. 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 We could have done that.